First impressions count in every facet of life, including rock and roll. And a select few bands took that to heart by releasing their debut albums that stand out as some of the best work they have ever produced throughout their careers. It's not an easy feat to accomplish, mainly because most artists are still finding their footing when they release their debut albums. However, there are those who released an absolute banger right off the gate, and even fewer who had a hard time reaching the standard they set with their first records again. It's as if their very best was already presented in their debut albums and consolidated legacies that have just begun to take shape. So what are some of these debut albums that immediately made a statement? Stay tuned as we go through our top 10 picks of the best debut albums in rock. Metallica, Kill Em All. Heavy metal legends Metallica came out swinging with their debut album Kill Em All, which is recognized by many as the birth of thrash metal. When Metallica began playing clubs in the late 80s, they were unlike any other heavy metal band before. They were fast, aggressive, and energetic, but they were also technically gifted. Early on, they made a name for themselves in the underground metal scene and set high expectations for their debut album. And boy, did they deliver. Released in 1983, Kill 'Em All had everything you can expect from early Metallica. Fast tempos, harsh vocals, and furious musicianship. Not only did the record establish Metallica as a band to watch out for, but it also launched a thrash metal movement that thrived in the 80s. And if that wasn't impressive enough, Metallica followed it up with three more heavy metal classics that decade. Van Halen. Released in 1978, Van Halen's self-titled debut album opens with Runnin' With The Devil, a solid headbanger that is perhaps one of the best opening tracks to an album ever. But aside from that, this album signaled the arrival of one of the greatest guitar gods who ever lived. Eddie Van Halen's innovative and influential guitar technique is on full display throughout the album, and his legendary solo Eruption, which displays the full range of his powers, is only the record's second track. But that's not to count out the rest of the band, who are undeniably in top form on this album. Even today, as far as debut rock albums, few can compare to the impact and legacy of Van Halen. Linkin Park Hybrid Theory the debut album of Linkin Park, Hybrid Theory, was a surprise hit that immediately established the band as one of the biggest rock albums of the new millennium. When new metal exploded in the late 90s to early 2000s, there were a number of bands that fans viewed as the leaders of the era. But no one expected it to be a new band called Linkin Park. And yet, thanks to Hybrid Theory, Linkin Park became one of the era's most prominent bands almost overnight featuring many of the band's most popular songs such as Crawling, Paper Cut, and of course the monster single, In The End, Hybrid Theory was an instant classic and an undeniable relic of a time when new metal ruled the airwaves. Korn Speaking of new metal, Korn's self-titled album is widely recognized as the record that started it all. So not only did this album find Korn at their best, it also created an entirely new genre. Released in 1994, Korn was an uncanny blend of metal, funk, hip-hop, and grunge that nobody had heard of before. As the first album of its kind, it was either going to be a disaster or an innovative masterpiece. It ended up being the latter and became one of the most influential albums of 90s metal, paving the way for bands such as Deftones, Incubus, System of a Down, Limp Bizkit, and Slipknot. Korn's subsequent releases may have outsold this album, but none could match the impact and legacy set by their first release. Oasis, Definitely Maybe. Not only did Oasis's debut album Definitely Maybe turn them into one of the world's biggest bands, it also helped spark a renewed global interest in British pop music. While much of the Western world was caught up in the alternative rock and grunge scene of the early 90s, Oasis introduced the opposite with their debut album. Definitely Maybe is a record deeply rooted in the Beatles style and features a warmer, more upbeat melodic sound compared to the abrasive, anti-authoritarian elements of grunge. The album reached number one on the UK Albums Chart and became the country's fastest selling album at the time, an impressive feat for a debut containing many of the band's beloved tunes such as Supersonic, Live Forever, and Shaker Maker, Definitely Maybe is acclaimed for putting Britpop on the map and establishing Oasis as one of the UK's most significant artists. Rage Against the Machine 
Rage Against the Machine's debut album isn't just a collection of solidly crafted, game-changing songs. It's also a defiant statement against the system. It's an album that is as politically charged as it is musically impressive. From the album opener, Bomb Track, to the monstrous finale, Freedom, Rage Against the Machine is a killer no filler, with vocalist Zac De La Roche's rhyming tirades accompanied by Tom Morello's innovative guitar work. The result is a rap-rock hybrid with an undeniably punk energy that puts Rage in a league of its own. Even 30 years later, no band or record has ever come close to the perfect mix of political fury and technique displayed on this album, Ramones. The Ramones' debut album stood out because of its raw simplicity, straightforwardness, and short duration, and launched punk rock as we know it. At the time of its release, rock bands like Led Zeppelin, The Who, and Queen favored long numbers and complex song structures that showcased their technical prowess, whereas the Ramones looked the other way. Influenced by bands such as the Beatles and the Beach Boys, the Ramones created minimalist rock songs with the speed and volume turned all the way up. The result was one of the most essential albums in rock history that influenced the punk, grunge, and heavy metal genres. Boston. As a whole, Boston's self-titled debut album, released in 1976, sounds like a collection of the best that rock and roll has to offer up to that point. That's likely why it's considered a milestone of 70s rock, with songs such as More Than a Feelin' and Peace of Mind still regularly played on classic rock radio until today. Founder and guitarist Tom Scholz's love for classical music, British pop, and guitar-driven rock, and singer Brad Delp's wide vocal range led to the distinctive sound that characterized Boston's debut album. Their music immediately made an impact and caught the attention of listeners and critics who had nothing but praise for the record. Upon its release, it became the best-selling debut album in the U.S. Today, it has sold around 20 million copies worldwide and is one of the best-selling albums of all time. Pearl Jam 10 Despite being an iconic grunge album, Pearl Jam's debut album 10 has more in common with classic rock and arena rock than the records of its grunge peers like Nirvana, Soundgarden, and Alice in Chains. It wasn't a commercial success upon its release either, and only gained momentum once Nirvana's Nevermind blew up. Nonetheless, 10 features some of their best written songs of the Seattle-based grunge scene at the time and established Pearl Jam as future leaders of alternative rock. The album contains fan favorites such as Jeremy, Even Flo, and Alive, which are driven by Eddie Vedder's distinctive baritone vocals and haunting storytelling through his lyrics. It remains the band's most commercially successful album and their definitive masterpiece. Guns N' Roses' Appetite for Destruction When Guns N' Roses welcomed everybody to the jungle in 1987 with Appetite for Destruction, the world wasn't ready for them. Nobody had seen or heard anything like Guns N' Roses before. The boys may have taken their cues from the likes of Aerosmith, The Rolling Stones, and ACDC, but they were younger, had more attitude, and rocked harder than anyone else. This was all reflected in their debut album, Appetite for Destruction, a record that epitomized sex, drugs, and rock and roll with a great collection of songs to go with it. While it wasn't an immediate commercial success, the popularity of its singles, Welcome to the Jungle, Paradise City, and especially the ballad, Sweet Child of Mine, propelled the album and the band to new heights. The album eventually peaked at number one on the Billboard 200 and overtook Boston's self-titled album as the best-selling debut of all time. By combining the flashiness of glam rock, the tastefulness of blues, the attitude of punk, and the power of heavy metal, Guns N' Roses fashioned a one-of-a-kind rock and roll album whose legacy is matched by few, if any at all. Setting a high standard with a debut album is a challenging task, but these handful of bands prove it can be done. The only possible consequence of doing so is that a strong debut album may set the bar so high that the same artist can't reach it again. Still, a great debut album is a win, and there's no better way for musicians to introduce themselves than with a solid first effort.